Our next case is United States versus uh, V. Carroll Towing Company. Uh, this is a uh, 1947 case from the, uh, the Second cir Circuit. That's the uh, Circuit Court of Appeals that's uh, in the New York City uh, area. And um, this, is a, a, one, this is one of those cases that we talked about earlier where there are a lot of facts, there's a lot of information, a lot of different names. It, somewhat, it, it gets somewhat confusing. This, is, this kind, of the case, kind of a case is a perfect example of when you should diagram a case because uh, you're, you're getting this, this literary expression of, of all these different names and all these different uh, parties and it's, um, it's very difficult sometimes to, to keep track of, of, of some of these, uh, uh, these names and parties in these cases. Uh, and this, this is a relatively easy one. I mean, sometimes it gets very complex. So what we suggest that you do is diagram the case. And, and basically what you have here is a, a series of names. You've got um, the Connor Company. You've got the, uh, the, the uh, Anna C, which is a barge. You've got a bargee. You put that all in one, in one uh, box or one bracket because they're all part of the, uh, the same entity. Uh, you've got a harbor master from Grace. You've got the, the, uh, the Carol, which is the, the Grace tugboat. Uh, so what you want to do is, is you, you, you make something that's, that's comfortable for you uh, so that you can easily identify uh, the connections and relationships and, and the, the causes of action and the claims in all, the, in all these different uh, kinds of cases. Now in this particular case what we have is a situation where uh, a, a tugboat was hired uh, by the, uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad Company to, to move a particular barge, and the barge is called the Anna C. And as it happened, this barge was carrying a, a cargo of flour. Now, apparently what took place was uh, the barges were, um, the barge was being moved. Uh, there was a harbor master who was called to assist in that particular move. And uh, unfortunately, what resulted was the barge broke away and started floating down the river. And another tugboat uh, came to the rescue of, of these, this group of barges floating down the river. And uh, what happened next was the barge that was loaded with the flour struck a tanker. So you see, you get these, these, <laughs> these kind of Rube Goldberg kinds of, you know, series of events that one uh, compounds the other. And that's what happened in this particular case. So you have these two tugboats uh, there's, uh, there's the Grace and there's the Carol, and the tugboat company is, uh, is involved in, in, in trying to, to uh, bring back the, the, uh, the, the loose barge. Now unfortunately, what also happened was that the barge normally has a bargee, which is a, a person who is stationed on the barge to, to watch the barge, and you know, that's his job, but now the court you know, talks about the fact that at this particular time, for whatever reason, the bargee wasn't on the barge. So when the barge went down the river, after the fastenings came apart or came loose, the barge struck the tanker and the propeller on the tanker punctured a hole in the barge. And because the bargee, who was the, the, the guy who's supposed to, you know, be watching the barge wasn't there, Nobody was on board to notice the fact that this barge is taking on water and then of course it subsequently sank and it, it lost uh, its cargo of flour. So the, the, the court talks about the claims here and the, the court says the Grace Line wishes to exonerate itself from all liability because the harbor master was not authorized to pass on the sufficiency of the fast of the Anna Sea which held the tier to Pier 52. The Carroll Company wishes to charge the Grace Line with the entire liability because the harbor master was given an overall authority. Both wished to charge the Anna C with a share of all her damages, or at least with so much as resulted from her sinking. The Pennsylvania Railroad Company also wishes to hold the barge liable. The Connors Company wishes to, the decrees to be affirmed. So you have, uh, here again, this is one of the reasons why it's very important to diagram because you know everyone's pointing fingers at each other and you you, you really need to, to, to keep, uh, be aware of uh, who's on first, what's on second, you know, you've got to find out who's on third. Uh, and, you know, the court goes into this uh, discussion of this case, and uh, one of the things you have to identify is you know, the questions of authority here, like, you know, what authority did, did, did the uh, harbor master have and such. 
And the court also identifies uh, the distinction between uh, colli collision damages and sinking damages. And you know, when you have, uh, when you're studying the law, you will find that one incident can result in uh, different kinds of damages. And it is important that you keep track of, of, of the damages as well as, as the causes of action. And here again, as I said, the, the, the court identified the, diff the, the distinction between the damages caused as a result of the collision and the damages caused as a result of the sinking. And in this particular case, the damages caused as a result of the collision are those damages that stem from the fact that there was um, th that the barge wasn't secured properly, and that was co what caused it to, to collide in the first place. The sinking damages are those damages that caused because the the bargee who normally should have been on board the barge to to realize you know to, to keep track of it, to, to take care of it, to observe what's going on wasn't there. So uh, those damages flow from the fact that no one the bargee was at his post. And um, the court goes and identifies the fact that you know the the, uh, the, the, the bargee's excuse what appear to be a fabrication as to, to why he was not there. And the court says that in such circumstances we hold, and is all that we do hold, that it was a fair requirement that the Connors company should have had a bargee aboard unless he had some excuse for his absence during the working hours of daylight. And of course, you know, the, the court, you know, goes into a, a discussion about um, the, the variables concerning the, the, the duty that's owed uh, uh, in these circumstances by the bargee. And identify, the court identifies three uh, variables. The first, the probability that the barge will break away. The second, the gravity of the resulting in injury if she does. And the third, the burden of, adequate, of adequate precautions. So there you have, you know, the, the, the question of duty. And uh, we are studying, the, 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 you will be studying uh, the area of tort. You will be, you will be studying uh, this area of, of negligence. And, and negligence is, is a, a very important area to, to study. And duty and care are, are very intertwined with the, with the study of negligence. Uh, so read this case very carefully, and you will find that it gives you a, a good overview of the area of negligence.